So the amount of panic coming from Warner Brothers regarding Aquaman 2 right now, oh, it is absolutely unreal. I mean, after some of the things I've heard, and I'm going to share with you in just a moment, I would love, love to be a fly on the wall in the executive meeting. Could you imagine that? Hey, what's that parasol-shaped insect doing with that little tape recorder? Oh, nothing. By the way, let's talk a little bit more about Aquaman 2. See, after the last court decision, oh, the sources, they are spilling that tea. And you know what they uniformly agree on? There is panic behind the scenes at Warner. People are afraid that this win here, it might actually reveal even more damaging things about that nameless person. This guy might actually win. People don't think he got a fair trial in the UK. Yeah, that is not going to work out well for them at all. Now, added to that fact is there are certain outlets in the mainstream media that are no longer shilling Warner and that nameless person. They seem to be waking up to what's going on and seeing that social tide turn, and they're asking point blank, should James Wan remove that nameless person from Aquaman 2? Added to that is another giant giant monetary problem for that nameless person when it comes to Aquaman 2. I mean, no wonder you have sources reporting that that certain nameless person, they're not taking this well. They're cracking up behind the scenes. They're reporting stress. They're reporting depression. They're not able to get on the fitness track like they should be for that movie. Yeah, they know that this, this is their last chance, their last big one. If this stuff falls apart, if that case goes a specific way, they are absolutely done. You and I are going to talk about all of that today. Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. Ah, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing wonderfully. When it comes to Aquaman 2 and that certain nameless person, I don't think it's unfair to say that things have changed. They are trying to swim upstream now. Yep, somebody's fishy flick and their career. Oh, they're starting to have real problems. I mean, the media, somebody that has shielded her for years now, shielded Warner for years now, is saying things like this. While we're excited for the film, we are perplexed why James Wan brought that certain nameless person back. Huh, so they want to still shield the film, but as far as that person goes, they don't want to shield them? Oh, they don't want to shield them at all. Now, what's funny is the things that are being talked about here and talked about in other articles, too, are the things that Warner Brothers is worrying a lot about behind the scenes. See, this article, it talks about them taking sides, and they did take sides. They know they took sides, and you have a lot of people questioning why they took that specific side, especially Especially since you see what's happening in the courtroom, you see what's happening publicly, they can try to do damage control. But yeah, they're worried about this stuff and they are worried about it big time. See, from what I've been hearing from multiple trusted sources, when I say trusted sources, by the way, I'm not saying quote unquote sources like the media likes to play it. I'm talking about confidential sources that can 100% be trusted. There is panic big time panic behind the scenes at Warner with people sticking their necks out, backing that certain nameless person. And this decision here, oh, it's got them worried big time. Now, I'll tell you why in just a second, but if you haven't heard about this decision, I just want to read you this part. There are 11 pages total, but this, I think it says it all. Quote, the court is not persuaded by defendants. Again, that would be a certain nameless person's argument that plaintiff, again, plaintiff is JD, had a full and fair opportunity to litigate the UK action. Defendant was not a party in the UK action, was not treated as one because she was not a named defendant. She was not subject to the same discovery rules applicable to named parties. In fact, defendant could not have been a named defendant in the UK litigation because her allegedly defamatory statements were made after the UK action commenced. Now, like this article notes, Warner Brothers took sides. Or when you break it down, 
people in positions of prominence, executives, they took sides in this. They decided that they were going to unceremoniously dump J.D. They also decided on the other side of that, they were going to keep that nameless person around. And they didn't care if millions, millions of signatures came in. They figured they would ignore or they would denigrate customers. And you know, that doesn't play very well. It especially doesn't play very well when they were promised a short case that probably wouldn't even go to trial. It would get dismissed right out the gate. Well, you know what? It's not going to be. You're going to have a trial. It's going to come up in May of next year. And that time frame, it absolutely terrifies some of the people that have everything on the line and could lose so, so much in the process. Why is that? Well, let me read you a sentence here and then we'll make this fit. So principal photography for the film kicked off in London at the end of June 2021. And while the film should have no more than a couple of months left of shooting, it is expected to arrive around the holiday season 2022. So the real Laura B put this and many other things together. Props to her, by the way. Definitely follow her on Twitter. But this showcases what they're so concerned about. You notice that date here for trial, 0411 2022 Hmm. See, the original trial date, it was in May of 2021. Huh, that was right before filming would have started. Hey, if they would have had to do some adjustment, no must, no fuss, right? But now, with April 2022 being that new trial date, they'll be finished with filming. But the movie, it hasn't come out yet. So this thing here, oh, it can very much do damage. And a lot of it at that. See, when I say damage, we are talking about career ending amounts of money. This movie had a $180 million budget. When you add in advertisement, that's $360 million you have to recoup. And this brand here, it is worth billions now. One movie alone, just on the screen, made $1.143 billion. Yeah, you must that up. You got some big, big problems. That'll mean people get fired and that nameless person, they will be done. Now, what's fascinating about this to me is that depending on how this panic materializes, that nameless person could be done poof, just like that. What I mean is this. Say those top executives, they don't feel good about this movie. They decide they need to simultaneously release this HBO Max theatrical release. You know what happens? It triggers monster payouts to people like Jason Momoa. That also causes movies to underperform. When that happens, who do you think is going to get blamed for a franchise worth billions now for not performing? Do you think the beer bug? Absolutely not. Jason Momoa? Nope. Executives? Uh uh. They're not getting blamed. Nameless person? They're going to have fingers pointed at them. People are going to be asking questions in meetings. That person? Oh, it could very well undo them. Like I said, people are panicking. There's a lot of noise. That noise uniformly points the finger at that nameless person with a lot of people asking why. Why did we ever go this route? But anyway, let me know what you think about this stuff. And as always, too, appreciate the heck out of you. You make this stuff work. Can't say that enough. Thank you there. If you want to help out the channel, there are links in the description. Check those out. We could always use your help too. You being here though, that matters. Thank you. Appreciate you. Going to end here with a see you soon.